There are fundamental questions being asked of senators this week, and that the principle of those is whose side are you on? Who do you work for? On Monday, Tuesday, and again today, we got an answer. On the other side of the aisle, they made it clear. They stand with the big banks. They don't stand with the infrastructure of everyday people who make this country the great place we have become. They do not stand for opportunities like the ones that allowed Americans to come together after World War II to get an education, get jobs, become the greatest generation that built our nation into the greatest on Earth. Instead, our friends across the aisle stand with Wall Street lobbyists who demand that we do not take up this bill. What an outrage. They stand for maintaining a banking system that denies people and businesses the funds that they need and sells people mortgages that they can't afford while lining executive pockets with billions in compensation. The picture is quite clear, very obvious as to what's taking place here. After hearing the demands of the Wall Street lobbyists, the other side of the aisle systematically marched down here, voted no in lockstep, not once, not twice, but three times. No one bold enough to say, yeah, we ought to do something about this situation that hurt our economy so, that destroyed jobs, lives, and uh, homes. What the Republicans voted against three times this week was simply to start debating the Wall Street reform bill to make it an even fairer system. The banking lobbyists may not want us to take up this bill, but everyday people do want reform. They do want change. They do want to see capital flowing into small businesses so they can get on with work and planning their families and their children's futures. So on behalf of the everyday people whose side we are on, we'll keep voting to take up this bill until the other side understands that that's what the American people want and give them a break. Now, some say that they voted no because they wanted more time to make a deal. The reality is that the American people are fed up with backroom deals that leave them out in the cold. And we've listened to testimony carefully that has been developed these days <clears throat> and are shocked to find out how they think that Hiding the deals were okay, uh, but they didn't want it to be known to the public. Uh, they, they, they want us to roll up our sleeves, talk a lot about this bill, tell the public the truth, vote on amendments, and pass a strong Wall Street reform bill. That's what the average person in this country wants. So why don't the banking lobbyists like our bill? There are several reasons because it puts an end to giant taxpayer-funded bailouts by creating a safe, responsible way to liquidate failing firms. They, they don't like it because it will end the era of too big to fail and stop protecting irresponsible executives who mismanage their companies. Because it will help prevent reckless gambling with investors' money by starting a new consumer protection watchdog. They don't want those things to happen. And because it moves the derivative markets from the shadows to the sunlight so that these transactions are transparent, so people understand what's going on. Madam President, right now, across our country, ordinary Americans are facing real tough problems. Many struggle to find a job, meet their monthly bill. Many are struggling to pay for a college education. And far too many of our people are unable to keep their homes from falling into foreclosure. And that's why we've been working so hard to reform our financial system, to make big banks accountable and shine a light on Wall Street. But not on the other side of the aisle. They literally have taken their marching orders direct from Wall Street 
We know that key Republicans met with Wall Street executives and political consultants about how to attack this bill, about not permitting us to exercise the responsibility that we have. But it's not working because we're on the side of everyday people, the people who sent us here. Send us here with a plea. Help us. Help us with our lives. Help us take care of our families. Help us educate our kids. Help us protect ourselves uh, when health care is so required. And the American people have made it clear. They're not fooled by the delaying tactics and secret deals, and they want Wall Street reform. In the last decade, we saw how much power the financial sector has over our entire economy. The irresponsible actions by big banks led to the sub subprime, subprime bubble that led homes to appreciate far beyond their worth and led millions of Americans to take on loans that they should never have qualified for. The results were catastrophic and the collateral damage immense. Many of these people were seduced into taking loans <clears throat> that uh, they were advised that they could handle. They didn't use good judgment, but they paid a heck of a price for it. Eight million jobs were lost, retirement accounts shriveled, and small businesses shut their doors. The ethical failures <clears throat> of Wall Street almost brought our economy to the brink of a second Great Depression. And as a former CEO of a <clears throat> major company, I understand the need for a strong financial sector. But I also come to work every day reminded of the millions of people who have lost their jobs through no fault of their own. Make no mistake, Wall Street reform, Wall Street change is absolutely necessary. And that's why we're going to keep moving toward this on the, forward on this critical bill. We have to continue to take our message to the American people and let the other people on the other side of the aisle say no, no, no. Those on the other side of the aisle may try to disrupt. They may try to, dis to, distru to distort. They may try to destruct. But we're going to continue the fight for ordinary Americans, the people who wake up every morning, play by the rules, work hard. <clears throat> and I uh, repeat <clears throat> something I said a moment ago, and that is, that how can we ignore to support the infrastructure in our country, the people who make the things happen every day, who are there uh, to do whatever the jobs are that are necessary, and uh, reserve the best <clears throat> and, uh, and the, the uh, most for those few at the top. We can't do it that way. We have an infrastructure here that's even far more precious than our physical infrastructure, and that's our human infrastructure. And we're going to continue to tell the American people what's happening so that we can make the changes necessary to avoid the catastrophe that we've had over these last couple of years. Thank goodness, with the leadership of President Obama and the administration and the work of colleagues, we're making progress, but the progress is not rapid enough nor broad enough. But we're going to insist on moving down the road of progress. We'll insist on doing right, what's right for our country, for our families, and our future. And I hope that somebody, someone on the other side of this political aisle will say, hey, listen, we're not gaining, getting anywhere by just walking down the steps together and saying no and not permitting change to take place that's critical for our society and our world. And with that, I yield the floor. No